the AWS Certified Data Analytics Specialty. I passed it yesterday and that's why in this video I'm going to talk about why you would want to take this exam, who can take it, how I prepared, how hard it was, how long did I prepare, the testing experience that I had, and my top tips for taking this exam. My name is Jan Stoneman and I'm a solution architect. I work day-to-day -day with AWS technologies, and now I have all the AWS certifications available until they come out with the next one next year. And I'm an AWS ambassador, which means I make a lot of content about AWS, so check that out on Medium and subscribe to the channel. So why would you want to take this exam? I think the top reason really is motivation and structure for learning. By registering for the exam in advance, you know, set it for six months, just schedule it, just buy it, just buy the exam. That gives me a target to work towards and I don't want to have the shame of rescheduling the exam. I don't want to lose money by failing it because my company doesn't reimburse me if I fail it. By the way, this exam is $300 but if you have taken an exam previously by AWS and passed it, you'll have a 50% off voucher in your certification account. So that's the motivation part. And then there's also the structure. You know, AWS is a vast amount of stuff to learn, but if you have a particular certification and you have the exam guide, you can narrow it down to a more manageable scope of learning and structure your learning that way. And the next reason why you would take this exam is, at least in my case, it actually does improve my intuition for all things cloud-related, AWS-related. So when I'm talking to customers and trying to solve problems, those things that I learned for the exam kind of bubble up and integrate themselves into those problem-solving situations at work. Another reason I took the exam is I had all of the AWS exams passed, all of the certifications, but then they came out with another and I just want to catch them all, Pokemon. And another reason in this particular case was that my company had a cash prize if someone got that certification by a certain date. So I was like, yeah, I want that cash prize. And all opinions in this video, by the way, are my own. But if you want to check out the job listings at SMX, and if there's something that interests you, send me a message on LinkedIn or DM me on Twitter, links below, and maybe I can refer you. Next is who can take this exam? Actually, anyone can. There are no prerequisites. In the past, you had to have an associate. Now you don't. However, I would recommend getting the Solution Architect Associate first because even though it's a data analytics exam, it does assume you know the core services of AWS like KMS, IAM, EC2, Lambda. Do you know those really well? Well, you kind of need to before you take this exam. You may already know those core services from work. And in that case, why not just take the Solution Architect Associate and just validate that you do know the things that AWS assumes you know, so that you have a good foundation on which to start learning for the data analytics certification. Next, I want to talk about how did I prepare for the exam? Well, that is a lot of different ways. And one of my favorite ways is actually YouTube. AWS has a ton of talks available. And my favorite way of searching for these talks for this exam are using the keywords in quotes, best practices, and then one of the four core services for this exam, Kinesis, Glue, EMR, and Redshift or in quotes, tech talk, and one of those four services, Kinesis, Glue, Redshift, or EMR. The exam does go into detail on other services, but those are really big, heavy services that have a lot of detail to them. And if you know those services really well, you're gonna do well on this exam. So I watched a lot of tech talks and reinvent talks given by AWS 
from 2019 and 2020. These certification exams only include things that were released earlier than six months ago. So you don't have to listen to the latest talks from three months ago. So keep that in mind when you're choosing which talks to focus on. And I listened to these YouTube talks over and over again because there were certain very technical talks that it, it took a few times to listen to them to really have them sink in. And that's where the chapters or the, the timestamps on these talks really came in handy. That way I could skip the intros when I was going back and I just clicked on the detailed things where I was like, yeah, I need to hear that again. For example, grouping in glue or elastic resize in kinesis or wait, the elastic resize in EMR. So use those timestamps to really listen to the things that you feel a little fuzzy still on. And another way I prepared was with a Cloud Guru. They have a course specifically for this certification. So I listened through all of the lectures and I kind of listened to it like an audiobook. So while I'm driving or while I'm, you know, doing some chores. So probably not the best way to listen, but when I got to parts where I'm like, ooh, uh, this is something that I'm not really getting, then I would stop what I'm doing. I wouldn't stop driving, uh, but I would take a moment to actually focus on those more difficult parts when they came up. But that's one way I could integrate studying more into my daily life without you know, setting aside huge chunks of time just for studying. And another really important aspect of my studying is flashcards. You know, getting the concepts, ingraining them through hands-on practice, all of that's important, but there is a fair amount of memorization involved too. Knowing the limits, knowing certain keywords and vocabulary, those kind of just need to come through memorization. So, the way I do flashcards is with Quizlet, the app. I'll put a link below. They have a premium version, but I just use the free version, it's fine. And the way I choose which flashcards to create is first I go through the course, I watch YouTube lectures, but then when I'm kind of a month or two out from the exam, I start hammering the things that I don't know so well yet. And the way I figure out the things I don't know so well yet is I take a practice exam and I use a Cloud Guru for that. Uh, AWS did release a website recently that has a bunch of free practice exam questions. It's the AWS Skill Builder website and I'll put a link below for that. And it even has it in several languages, but I'll put a link below for the one in English and you can search for other languages if you want. And then for any questions I get wrong, I realize, okay, I need to understand not just this question, but this topic a little better. And I look up that topic on the AWS documentation and I'll create like three to 10 flashcards about that topic, about numeric limits, like one megabyte is the limit for such and such with kinesis. And grouping is the approach you need to take for this situation in glue. Then I just practice those flashcards anytime I get a chance. While I'm going to the bathroom, while I'm waiting for my water to boil. You know, all those little moments, literally 10 seconds here, 30 seconds there, it all adds up. Another way I practiced for this exam is having done AWS on the job for three years, that gives me a really comfortable understanding of EC2, KMS, S3, IAM, all those core AWS services you use every day when you're working with AWS technologies, which made it easier to then dive into the less familiar technologies like Glue because I had the framework surrounding it. And then doing some hands-on practice with the new technologies um, that you might not be so familiar with, like just create a cluster, send some data, you know, even if you don't have a lot of time, just at least create a cluster, you know? Again, the four services, if you know them well for this exam, that'll help a lot. Um, that's Glue, Kinesis, EMR, and Redshift. Finally, a couple things that I did to prepare for this exam which are more specific to me. I had a data analytics immersion day at work where an AWS solution architect just 
uh, spent a whole day with a group of people at my company and you know talked through the data analytics services and gave us a chance to do hands-on labs where he answered our questions. Another thing I participated in is the AWS Data Analytics Black Belt Program, which lasted for three weeks and uh, two days a week, full day of lectures and labs, or labs on the other days. There, AWS had different speakers for all the different data analytics aspects. I don't know if that's available to everybody. I was invited because I'm an AWS ambassador, but I think one requirement definitely is that you work for an AWS partner. Now, some of you may be wondering how hard is the exam? I find myself Googling that question sometimes before taking an exam. And I'd say harder than the Solution Architect Associate exam and easier than the Solution Architect Professional. And one way you can kind of gauge that is that the Solution Architect Associate, the questions are this long and the uh, Solution Architect Professional, the questions and answers kind of take up a whole page. Sometimes you even got to scroll. Uh, and I, on average, the questions for this exam are kind of in between those two, taking up about half a page on average. And that just tells you the amount of detail that goes into those questions. It was easy enough for me that I had an hour left of the 190 minutes allotted and still passed the exam. Uh, the reason I had so much time left over, though probably was more due to the fact that I really had to go to the bathroom and they didn't let me with the online proctoring. More about that later. And I just want to race through it. And fortunately, my intuition based on all the studying served me well. Speaking of studying, that leads to the question, how long did I prepare for this exam? Well, in a way I've been preparing for three years by doing AWS all day long, every day, for three years on the job and studying because the exam does touch on all the core services of AWS and the more familiar and comfortable you are with EC2, S3, IAM, the better for the exam as well. But for this exam in particular, I think it's been on my horizon for about six months and I've gradually been increasing the study time during those six months, getting the most serious about it in the, the month leading up to it. And one way I get more serious is I start listening to less audiobooks on other topics and uh, use more of that spare listening time in my week, uh, you know, while I'm doing chores and so forth uh, on the exam by listening to YouTube talks by the AWS channel. Now, what was my exam experience like? Well, I chose Pearson View Online Proctoring, and that's because on Reddit, I read bad things about PSI, plus the Pearson View website just looks a lot more up to date than PSI, which is always a sign of something. And actually, in terms of pros and cons of my experience, I actually was pleasantly surprised that they did a lot of updates since my last exam about half a year ago and there were like no technical glitches this time and uh, the whole check-in process was a lot less onerous as a result and i went with online proctoring obviously covid and it's nice not to leave the house but you know if covid were not happening and i were living close to a testing center i probably would do that because then you can go to the bathroom I've, I've gone to Pearson View testing centers in the past when it was not COVID and I was living close to a testing center because I was living in a city and that was a lot more pleasant. You know, I could go out to the water fountain, go to the bathroom uh, because they allow you to do that with um, testing centers. And uh, one more uh, pro to this experience is it seems like they changed their policy. Uh, now they allow you to have a beverage of your choice while you're doing the exam. So I had a glass of water sitting there. I pretty much didn't touch it because <laughs> halfway through, I really started needing to go. And I was like really getting faster and faster and answering all the questions by the end because I really had to go, which is the only con to the online proctoring experience that I had. So what would I do differently next time with uh, an exam like this, I definitely would want to have done more 
hands-on practice and I think I'll use this channel as a way to catch up in the future uh, to do some demos of some of these technologies uh, to really cement it more. And I think I would do it a little bit later in the day so that I can stop drinking two hours before the exam. You know, I don't want to start the day without any drinking. So I think in the future I'll do it like at 10 a.m. Uh, so that I can stop drinking by 8 a.m. And finally, to summarize my top tips here, use flashcards. You can search for data analytics on Quizlet and use community flashcards, and that's great. But I would definitely also make your own based on the places you think you have the most gaps from the practice exam. Top tip number two, YouTube videos. Just put them on repeat. <laughs> the talks on EMR, Kinesis, Redshift, and Glue, uh, the, and just focus on those really technical portions where they talk about best practices. Top tip number three, get hands on with the technology. Open up the console, click on all the options, spin something up, but definitely spin it back down right away because the, the big data technologies are pretty much the most expensive things on AWS. And top tip number four, use the whiteboard on the Pearson View online proctoring. So I have a hard time staying awake no matter how much caffeine I've had on these online exams because it's just me and the computer and I can't move and I just start getting sleepy. But the way I stay awake and focused is I pretty much type out all my thoughts uh, on the whiteboard feature they have. And that works for me because I'm a really fast typer. If you're not a fast typer, I think it can help to just write down the question number and A, B, C, D, you know, the four uh, options or the six options. And then type out the N for no next to the option that you definitely know is wrong because process of elimination is usually a really efficient way to get to the correct answer on these multiple choice exams. So those were my top tips for the AWS Certified Data Analytics Specialty Exam. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about the exam, nothing about the questions in particular, I can't answer that, but anything else about how to prepare, leave a comment below. And if you have comments about things that you did that helped you, and or if you passed the exam and wanna share it, please leave a comment below. Uh, please subscribe for more videos like this coming out every Sunday. And please give it a like if it helped you. My name is Jan Stoneman, and this was AWS Certified Data Analytics Specialty Exam Prep. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you.